as you all know, everywhere you go, you see screens. Smartphones, iPads, laptops, everybody's staring at their screens and uh, preoccupied with them. They invade all our spaces, they invade waiting rooms, they invade restaurants, they're everywhere we go. Some people try to uh, put limits on them, like in my classrooms here, I say, no, no screens, pay attention. You know, but it's a, I feel like it's a losing battle because they're sneaking around with their phones and, hey, what's that? You know, <laughs> and they think that they can do that and still understand what I'm talking about. I think that's a belief and I don't think multitasking is really effective. Some people are staring at them and it's dangerous to walk down the street and definitely lethal behind the wheel. That's not good at all. So this is a new normal. This, is, this isn't going to go away, these type of communication devices. And they're going to be in the future as well. So I think we have to accept it and look at how we can deal with it, which I'll try to do tonight. Um, people are avoiding real contact. That's the problem. They're, they're face to face. They're not wanting to talk. People text all the time, and that is the worst form of communication if you want to have any intimate connection. It's good to say pick up some milk or you know, logistical things. Emails aren't much better. People misinterpret those all the time. And what we need today are really effective forms of communication at this level because we don't have a lot of time. The amount of time we have to connect with a person is so condensed that it requires very high speed, effective communication. And those devices and the ways that we do it are not really effective. It's like if we went back to 56K modem dial-up. Remember that? What if we went back to that? Everybody go nuts. It's, that was crazy. What we end up with that kind of communication is what I call data share. It's just information. But what's missing is emotion. It's just content. And in order to have an intimate connection with somebody, children, lover, spouse, you need emotional connection. And that's where we're going somewhere with that, but it's not good. I mean, if you've seen You've seen this picture. I mean, that's I've seen that a lot. You know, there's no connection there. It's <laughs> looking at talking to other people, seeing the work they've done. So we have a major disconnect, and people end up feeling like roommates if they're in a relationship instead of lovers, and that creates a lot of pain and alienation, and loneliness, and it's very unfulfilling. So I can go on and on about the problem, which I don't like doing so much because I'm in the business of helping people have a better relationship, whether it's lecturing at the school or in clinical practice. So I'd rather talk about that, if you don't mind. Okay, um, the topics, oh, by the way, there was another screen that has been part of my career before all these technical devices. It was called television. Remember television? <laughs> Well, television's still around, but people, you know, would get distracted and look at television instead of interacting with their significant other. I used to call television the opiate of suburbia. You know, they just get thrown behind it and not real any connection, and they don't even know what's on. I don't know. Start from here. But now with the screens that we have, we can take television in a sense everywhere we go. On the little screens, people watching and stuff, they're not paying attention to each other and disconnecting. So let's talk about some good stuff. All right. The first thing I want to make a point about is let's differentiate emotion from thought. Because I ask people all day at work, how did that make you feel? How did you feel when she did that? Well, I feel it was totally inappropriate. No, that's what you think. How do you feel? Well, I feel she shouldn't have done it. No, that's what you think again. How do you feel? Well, it pisses me off. It makes me angry. OK, emotion, finally, three <laughs> questions later. <laughs> so when we're talking about emotion, the best way to think about it is one word descriptors. Hurt, sad, guilty, anxious, pleasure, joy, fear, anxiety. I mean, those, that's the language that I'm talking about. Now what makes emotion so important in a relationship, if I'm looking at a couple sitting in front of me, I'm like looking at arteries between them, metaphorically. And you know what flows in those arteries? 
keep that relationship alive is emotion. That's the blood of a marriage. That's the blood. That's the life force that keeps it going. And when I see people, their arteries are all clogged up. <laughs> that flow didn't happen too much. And one of my agendas is kind of an emotional angioplasty, cleaning it out. <laughs> and then keeping it going. So make sure you're talking emotion and not thought. Another thing that people do that's really blocks that connection is that they tell the other person that they shouldn't feel what they feel. What are you getting upset about? It's not that big of a deal. If you looked at it more rationally and logically, you'd see there's no reason to get upset. And you know what? No one else is upset. Why are you getting upset? So why don't you just kick back and relax and we'll have a good time? Anybody hear stuff like that? You hear the message in that? The message is you shouldn't feel what you feel. If you tell a lover or someone close to you that they shouldn't feel what they feel, they're going to stop opening up to you. That's like taking a knife and just cutting those arteries. Go from lovers to roommates really quick. And most people don't realize that. They just do it. So whatever your lover, spouse, child feels emotionally is a fact. It's not debatable. Okay? It's not debatable. It's a given. I don't care if you understand it, like it, feel the same way, it doesn't matter. It's a physiological reality for that person. How, all day, you know what I heard all day today? What do you get nervous about now? You've done lots of talks. You lecture all the time. I don't know. I'm nervous. Okay? <laughs> Let me be nervous. <laughs> I know you care, but I'm nervous. All right? So let's just get over that. So it gives validity to the person's emotions. That's the point. Another thing that we do is in our culture, which I don't understand, is we like to judge emotions. There's actually two lists, negative and positive. There are negative emotions, positive emotions. Good emotion or bad emotion. Constructive or destructive. So what happens if you happen to have an emotion that you consider negative? What are you going to do with it? What do you think your tendency is going to be? I'll answer for you. <laughs> it's not <a> classroom. <laughs> Critical thinking. <laughs> okay. You want to get rid of it. Who wants negative? Get that out of here. So where does it go? Do those negative emotions just dissipate out into the atmosphere? No. They sit there. You know where they go? They go in those arteries I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> That's the cholesterol of the arteries, what people call negative feelings. Resentment, anger, hurt, disappointment, frustration, fear. Those all that. Get those out of here. But you know what happens? If you can't express those so-called negatives, you end up expressing very little of anything. You end up flatlining. Boring. No passion, no excitement, no turn on. Now, you know, my grandmother used to tell me, now, Dan, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. How many of you heard that line? See, that is so dysfunctional. She was alive, boy, I'd tell her I'll lie. <laughs> because what that's implying is I can't tell you anger, hurt, fear, joy, or resentment, all negatives, but I can't tell you how warm and loving and caring I feel. The reality is you can't say the so-called negatives. You end up sharing nothing, very little. Now, Thanksgiving and Christmas, okay, I can keep my mouth shut for the day. Everything's nice. It's nice seeing everybody, yeah. I don't have to get into my relatives a see once a year. But with a lover 24-7, ah, all emotion is good. That's the point. Okay? All emotion is good. I don't know any negative feelings. They're not all pleasant, though. I don't like pain. But pain is a definite call to action. Get you motivated. What's, what's the number one negative emotion in America? Anger. Got an anger problem. Got need anger management. You need to control your anger. There's nothing negative about anger. It's a great emotion. I use it a lot in my work. It produces joy. <laughs> it's a motivator. It's a motivator. Now, how an emotion gets expressed is a different topic which we don't have time to talk about. That's the delivery part. First emotion, anger, and then you have this delivery. Well, that's a different subject because there are obviously awful ways to express anger. Okay? But the anger and the 
itself is good. And there are, you know, positive ways to do it. Okay. So it looks like I ran out of time. <laughs> anyway, keep that in mind. Thanks for listening.